Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a different kind of video for you. It is a very rainy February morning. So I'm going to share with you what a day in the life looks like as a homemaker and as a homeschooler. Um, also as someone with a side gig. So I do try to get some projects done today, just not very much. And we have nowhere to be. And so we're really just kind of taking the day nice and slow and uh, just kind of going with the flow. So we normally start our morning off with breakfast and now we are moving on to our homeschooling day. I don't require my boys to sit at the table very long ever. I don't think that that's the best way that they learn, but uh, my six year old is kind of in between kindergarten and first grade. So I do have him working on some more academic stuff like phonics and math on a regular basis. Uh, my three year old mostly just joins us because he wants to. But as you can see, I have him more doing creative things. Um, a lot of time he'll just sit there and paint or play with kinetic sand. But today he's building with this game we have called Build Z, uh, which he really likes. It has like a card that you match uh, the blocks to. And so he enjoys that. He kind of does his own thing. I do have a preschool book for him that he'll work on sometimes if he wants to and a handwriting book. Um, he actually has really great handwriting for a three-year-old so we just kind of let him do his own thing and if he wants to do schoolwork he can if he doesn't want to we don't push it um, my six-year-old right now is working on matthew c so this is his math curriculum we just finished up doing some phonics with um, explode the code and he's doing really well with that his readings really come along this school year um, but right now we're doing matthew c that's what those blocks are we really love this math program. It works really well for him because it's very cut and dry. Um, it's just number based. We've tried other math curriculums where there's a lot more um, reading involved uh, and it just gets too complicated. This is very straightforward and he does a really good job with it. Um, you can see now that Lincoln moved over, he loves to play with the Matthew C blocks and he has learned so much math just from playing with those blocks and seeing how many blocks can fit in the hundreds blocks and in the tens blocks. Um, I don't really have a great way to explain that, but really just letting him play has been uh, really educational for him. And Rowan is working on a logic book right now, which he really likes. Uh, he likes kind of the problem solving. That's a Kumon book that I can link for you. Um, some days we will do more Bible work than this. Some days we'll do handwriting, typing. We really, I just have like a lot of things in that box that will just kind of rotate through. I'm not too strict about anything we're doing. I feel good if he's gotten some phonics done. Here is a look at um, kind of our main core books. So that's the logic book right there that Rowan was working on, same and different. Um, and he likes that one a lot. It's actually a book I got for Lincoln, but Rowan's been actually using it a little bit more. I've been using the pre-K for Lincoln for um, from the good and the beautiful. There is Matthew C. And that would just explode the code for his phonics. And then the good and the beautiful um, early readers are really beautiful. Um, they have great artwork, so he likes those. And that's our typing book we're using from the good and the beautiful. Here are just some books up on our bookshelf. That's b more before five in a row. It's, it's more literature based. I haven't done a lot of that recently, but I want to because we've gotten gotten out of picture books. Just kind of showing you here some of the other things that we have. Teaching character through literature is another curriculum that, um, that uses a lot of literature and picture books. I highly recommend before five in a row and um, any of the beautiful feet books. There's the blocks that Lincoln was playing with. I'm going to pull this box out and just show you what else is in our rotation. So handwriting, a Kumon book of telling time, early Spanish. This is from the Target dollar spot. Um, and the letter books right there, not the hand, that's handwriting for Lincoln. He has two. I got the pre-K and the K just to see what he wanted to work on. Um, those letter books right there came with the good and the beautiful pre-K booklet that Lincoln likes. So that's a money book for Rowan and Rhyme Time. Those are all from Target and uh, he really likes those. I think, oh and those are our sight word flashcards we'll do sometimes instead of phonics. We'll just kind of rotate through different activities. Sometimes he'll read some Bob books which are nice and simple and then I have a lot of art set up right there for Lincoln to work on and then the, that's the Bible we're using for kids this year. I don't know that I'll stick with it and then theology is just another Bible-based book that we like a whole lot. Up here we have some more art supplies. And then those are my nature-based books up there. 
So try to keep everything nice and handy. Um, and we just kind of work on what we feel like working on that day. Moving on to lunch, we are having kind of a treat today. We're doing pigs in a blanket. My pig, my pigs, wow, <laughs> my kids call them pig rolls because it's a hot dog rolled up and I don't know, they came up with that name and that's what they, we call them in our house, they're pig rolls. Um, and so I'm just letting them kind of make their own lunch here. I am cleaning off the kitchen table one more time. Typically while I'm uh, cleaning up from the morning and making lunch, the kids will go downstairs. We got them this big steel dome to climb on down in the basement and there's a swing down there um, and a bunch of their, I mean most of their toys. Um, one of the reasons we bought our house was just because of the basement. It has a very large unfinished part and a very large finished part. That's also where my husband works though, so that's been a little bit more difficult this year because they can get pretty noisy, but overall it hasn't been a huge problem. Um, I must say like having my husband home has been so nice. He's been home most of the year, honestly. Um, and as you can see, it kind of helps to have someone else around with the chores um, and just the cleaning. He is the one who mostly does all the dishwashing and just for him to be home more and not be commuting so much has really changed our lives. It's been so nice. Um, so typically I'll try to set out some fruit or something uh, for the kids to snack on and then we'll try to eat lunch together if we can. Okay, we just finished our very nutritious lunch. <laughs> no, not really. Just being real life with you. Sometimes we have healthy things. Sometimes we have uh, pigs in the blanket. Now the boys, I just kind of let them free play for a while. Lincoln chose to do some glue and popsicle sticks. <clears throat> that looks great, buddy. What are you making? You want to talk about it? I like your glue line on the top. What's the problem though? What problem do we have? Hey, <laughs> you can talk, it's okay. Did we run out of popsicle sticks? Yeah, how do we fix that? <clears throat> What's that mean? Why are you acting like you can't talk? Do we fix it by tearing off all the popsicle sticks and putting them back in the jar? No, what do we do? What do we gotta do? We gonna go to Branson. Branson! <laughs> Dollar Tree. I think Dollar Tree is where we've got those colorful popsicle sticks. Okay, but I'm gonna back away slowly so as to not disturb his quiet plane. I'm gonna give you a peek at the brother but I definitely don't want to disturb him. He's got Legos going. Okay, now we're coming back in here. I have a laundry mountain to fold. So here's the cookbook we're going to use today. It is published by America's Test Kitchen, which I'm a big fan of. Um, I got this for my six-year-old uh, two Christmases ago, and then we just got this one for the, the past Christmas, like a month ago. Um, and we really like them. He likes that he kind of has his own cookbooks, and so every now and then he'll just ask if he can use, some, use his books to make something. Um, I would say that the Test Kitchen recipes, they're not like the easiest recipes ever. So you're probably going to need to supervise, I mean, especially at my kid's age. I don't know if you have older kids. I'm sure they probably could pull off some of these recipes on their own. But of course, this one's more about um, cooking, and this one's more about baking 
and um, I really recommend them. I just think like visually they're really nice. And ooh, that looks great. The Super Bowl's this Sunday, so I'm kind of thinking maybe that's something we need to try. But yeah, today we are gonna make the oatmeal chocolate chip cookie recipe from this book. And I will try to maybe see if I can get that recipe for you to link below, but I'll also link these books below too. We're making cookies okay. for my recipe book. Oatmeal chocolate chip. With special kind of chocolate chips. Brown sugar first. Brown sugar, and then put in brown sugar first. Half a cup, two batches. I want to do the free thing. Okay, well, let's see. Let me help you get it nice and packed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really stuffed. Okay, here's your half a cup. And then, how much oil is it? Quarter cup. Pour it in there, please. When do we mix it? You can go ahead and mix. What color should it turn to me? Um, it just has to get all the same color. There's, I'm going to add some more stuff for you. Lincoln, I'm going to get your butter in a second. A quarter cup of ve uh, vegetable oil. Now, what else did you put in? We put in butter. And brown sugar and vegetable and vegetable oil. And that's all we put in now. Now we're starting to mix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not really tasty. Use so my muddle. Brown sugar, oil, butter, and stuff. Use my muddle, mom. Oh, really? Well, mine is quite like different than Roland. Cinnamon, egg, and vanilla. Should it taste good? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it'll probably be sweet. And I'll try sweet. Let's just taste it. Well, what we been doing? Mm -hmm. Probably should not have done cinnamon in the ones with the white chocolate chips, but it is too late. And then they used half a teaspoon of vanilla. I am not measuring vanilla, so. That bowl is still there. Just try your best to break it up. Oh, that vanilla smells great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to taste of that. Wait, does it need one egg? Mm-hmm. Yeah, one egg. You can put your shell in. Yeah, you can notice <laughs> the sound of the egg. Put in. If, if you can when they this time to just put this time to watch this video and you will know how to crack eggs. Just put your finger in the hole that I made. Wait, give me a hand. Right here. Stay there, I'll get you. That's that time. Right. Now the mix of it makes your egg and with all your other stuff. With your vanilla and cinnamon. We'll mix it up. I'm making mine the vanilla really with fast. and cinnamon. And it should look pretty dark brown. And come with the egg. <laughs> this we this we set of it turn into back to a white brown. So that's what how we should make it. And she look very floppy. Feel very floppy. Very easy in the bush. Oh, well we want to. Ready? I really want to taste it. I know. Let's have wait a sort. Thank 
a little bit more you know, have a, one whole cup of flour half a cup half a cup of flour now half a cup of flour into it you're linking you ready for your flour start mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing you will kind of see the egg and then mix one and a half cups of oats kind look wide open wide open wide this is what it's going to look like when everything is together. Yeah, the oats. And we're going to have oats, and it's almost done. It feels, like, it feels really hard at the store now. <laughs> it means that it's almost done. So there's one. One. Is it almost time to make? <laughs> I mean, like, taste it? Maybe, pretty soon. That's okay. it. Here's the half. Wait, did one and a half cup into mm -hmm. one and a half? Now we're all going to start mixing the eggs. Two. Mm -hmm. Mix it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, mix it in. Oh, gosh. Mom, this is all oats now. Now, is that what we need after that? And that's everything except for the chocolate chip. So give that a good mix for a little bit. I want twinkle ones. So I try to send the kids outside every day just to get some fresh air. Today I promised them that there'd be some mud outside so that helped them to ignore the cold for a little bit. Um, and they also love to use their umbrellas. So this is just them getting a little bit of exercise and fresh air outside while the cookies are baking. Okay, so it looks like the cookies came out okay. If you couldn't tell, we were making two different batches because we had these like white chocolate sprinkle chocolate chips that aren't focusing. Uh, we got those for Valentine's Day at Target and then we have just the regular semi-sweet chocolate chips over here because that's my preference. I'm not a big white chocolate fan but we had not made this recipe before and I did not like how oily they were but they actually they came together fine like they're nice and solid now. So I'm gonna let the boys get a taste test. They just came inside from the cold rain. It's only like 40 degrees out there if that how, how was it outside guys? Good. It's good? Yeah, you guys are pretty tough outside no matter what. I want one. So now that they've had some outside time, they're going to have a snack. And I'm going to send them downstairs then. They can turn on a movie maybe and play around with their toys down there. Um, and then I can get some projects done while they're taking a rest. There? No, let's set the table and I'll get you guys some milk. Okay. Alright guys, how do they taste? Are they the best oatmeal cookie, or do you feel like this recipe is not as good as other recipes? I like them. You like them? Mm -hmm. How about you, Rowan? What do you think? Very good. Very good? How do they taste with the white chocolate chips? Good. Still good? Mine good. Good. All right. Well, I guess this recipe gets a two thumbs up. Pretty low sugar recipe. I'm not too... Uh, upset about that. What was it? Only like a quarter cup of brown sugar mm -hmm. in the whole batch. All right, well, pretty good. If you're new to my channel, you might not know that I have an antique booth called Green Onion Vintage. That is what I post primarily on my YouTube channel so far. I'd like to do more like homemaking and homeschooling videos also, but. A lot of the time on here I'm sharing my antique booth and some of the projects I'm working on. So today I have just a couple signs that I am finishing up so that I can get them up into my booth. 
Um, I try to kind of keep my inventory fresh and I recently made a few signs and I've already sold a couple so I'm trying to keep those spaces filled up at the store and feel free to go watch those other videos if that interests you at all the idea of reselling or you know other side gigs that you can do from home it is pretty time consuming but I love that I can uh, do these projects here and there when I have the time get them up into my booth when I can uh, and just make a little bit of side money for our family so I have really enjoyed doing this and I have a ton of other videos showing you my projects. I especially have a tutorial of the sign that I'm making right here. I made a, a bunch of those in a recent video, so you should go check those out. Here's a quick look at the boys' bookshelves. We're gonna do some read aloud time right now in their room. Um, I just put this shelf in here because it could hold more books. I have such a hard time with book storage, but um, we're a huge fan of the Usborne books. I don't have a lot of like their fiction out here right now, like the ones we would use for homeschool read-alouds. These are more just, um, they're Osborne books, books that they can come in here and kind of flip through on their own if I need them to have some quiet time in their room. Um, so I'm a huge fan of all of these. And more than that, like my kids really love looking through these. Um, I would say, let's see. <laughs> Well, you saw I have boys, so What is Poop is definitely their favorite book, but they also love this orchestra one. They love this germ one. I've read Look Inside Space with my three-year-old maybe um, 4,000 times. He loves learning about space. He also loves learning about the human body. This one we got from Sam's as a Christmas gift, um, and it's really cool because it goes through like each layer of the body. I'll try to link that if I can find it for you because it's an awesome book. Um, another book we're really liking right now is when my mom got my boys for Christmas, What Should Danny Do? I saw some friends talking on Facebook about this too, so it must be getting kind of popular right now. But it's all about um, using his power to choose so that he can have either a good day or a bad day. And depending on my boys' moods, they either pick the bad choices, like the mean choices, or sometimes they'll pick the good choices. But it's a really cute book, and I think the message is really... Um, easy to understand and it's a good one because my oldest really struggles with emotional regulation and it's so much just about like his power to choose how he's going to react and I think this book really emphasizes that really well. So I will definitely link that and I think there's two other ones too that we haven't tried yet but that one is super cute. So yeah I just wanted to let you look through our bookshelf really quickly. Um, before we start our story time and I'll just let the boys pick today what they want to do because I don't have any curriculum that we're following right now that has the books like the specific books um, and I have some books up here too. so yeah now it's time we're gonna just have some quiet reading time together Lincoln, can you tell us what we're about to play? Yes. Yeah. How do you play it? What do you have to do? Just to touch your hole. And what are you trying to make? A shape. Yeah, we love this game. We got it for Christmas. It's called Hiss. Um, it says four plus, but Lincoln is three and a half, and he caught on real quick, and he loves this game. So you, it's kind of a color matching game where you make a snake, and it has to have a head and a tail. Um, and whoever gets the most cards at the end wins. So super simple, but we've played this maybe a thousand times, you think? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's still fun every time. And it's a game that I don't mind playing either, where there's some kid games that are a little brain numbing, but this one is actually pretty fun. So we're going to play Hiss now, and then I'm going to get started on supper. Yeah, bye! <laughs> Thank you. 
I have so many other educational board games to share with you guys. I won't do it in this video, but if you have young kids or grandkids or you're a homeschooler, make sure you subscribe because I want to do a video soon of all the board games we got for Christmas. We asked for a lot because it's our favorite way to spend time together. And also they just encourage learning and sharing and taking turns and all these different things. So we play a lot of games here and I have some really good ones that we got as gifts that I'd love to share in a future video. So make sure you subscribe so you can see that one. Now that the kids are down, I move on to my final cleaning of the night. Um, my kitchen table, as you can tell, is very well used throughout the day. I probably cleaned it off like five or six times today. Um, in a minute here, I'm going to take the garland down that is up in my light fixture. I totally just got used to it from Christmas time and just realized today that it's still up there in my light. So it's okay because it's like kind of a wintry thing, but I took that down because I already have like spring stuff up and that was kind of silly for me to forget that for so long. And now I'm about to scrub off all the paint and marker from the day. I have to do this literally every night. There's food, marker, paint, there's always something. Uh, normally every night I also move on to um, checking my budget. So we use YNAB for our budgeting. Um, for our budgeting software, wow. And it, it helps us to have like a, a budgeting line, a category for every dollar that we spend. We've been using this for years and it has kept us on top of our money. It really uh, prevents any money from falling through the crack. So if family budgeting interests you, let me know in the comments and I would be, love to make a video about that in the future. We have one income family. I would love to talk more about that with you guys. And then at the end of my day here, I am working on a custom order I have and um, I won't finish the order tonight, but I will get it started in my Cricut app. I always, almost always have some kind of custom order going on that I need to be working on. So that's something I'll do when the boys are in bed too. Okay, so before I let you go, I wanted to talk to you about what I used to do before bed, um, kind of my end of the day routine. Normally my husband and I will watch a show and then uh, closer to bedtime, I'll read something. Um, lately though, I've been just really bad about that habit because I've been so tired by the time it's bedtime. Um, I've even been going to bed earlier than normal. I'm not like first trimester tired, but I'm definitely third trimester tired. And what you didn't see in today's video was definitely like a couch nap after dinner. Like I just, I can't even like fight it at this point. I just am so tired. So I took a nap after dinner uh, while my husband got my boys down for bed. And then we watched a show while we were doing that. I, that's when I kind of cleaned up the kitchen a bit. And then um, I, I typically read before bed. And I'm going to show you what I've been reading, um, but I'm going to have to find a different time of day to do this because I just get too tired by the end of the day. Um, so my husband and I are going through the Bible recap. And to be 100% honest, I'm a few days behind. I need to catch up. Um, but the good thing about this is that every day's um, study is, is just these two pages. So it only takes a couple minutes. I mean, five to ten minutes to read through. Um, and we were really enjoying that. I was doing such a good job until I hit <laughs> third, the third trimester, which was about two weeks ago. Um, so I do want to catch up. I don't know if I'll try to read the days that I've missed or if I'll just try to jump in where I'm supposed to be. If there's one book in the Bible that I've read plenty of, it is Genesis. So I feel like um, if there's a few verses that I skip over, that would be okay. If you don't want to buy the book, um, you act, there's actually a really good podcast that is the same content as what is in the book. So the podcast is free. And basically, if you just go online, you can find the schedule like I did. It looks like this. And then every day it'll show you what verses you need to read. And then instead of reading um, the recap in the book, you could just go listen to the podcast. And so we've been using this to read the whole Bible in one year and they try to take you through chronologically instead of just book by book which I've, I've appreciated. Um, so that's one thing I've been reading. This is my new Bible I got for Christmas. Um, it's called She Reads Truth. It's a different translation than I'm used to so I'm kind of still getting used to it. Um, but it's really, it's really nice quality. It's really pretty and it's easy to read. I just find myself still going and checking other translations every now and then to see how they phrase things because it's a Christian standard Bible so it's more of like a contemporary translation 
but I do really like it and there's some pretty pages in here I mean it's definitely like four girls um, but getting both of those for Christmas was really uh, great and inspiring and um, I just need to get back into that because that is a habit that I was doing really well on and I've dropped the ball on and speaking of habits <laughs> this is the other book I'm reading which I am loving so much but I am really bad at building habits and this book has given me some really good ideas about why that is and but also like why habits are so important so I I'm really really loving this and I highly recommend it to anybody no matter what like daily habit you have or even if you feel like you don't need a new habit I just think that this book is really thoughtful and thought-provoking and um, I'm really really enjoying it. It's really popular right now so I'm sure you've heard of it before. I would just recommend if you have anything going on in life you have any kind of change that you want to make I would start with this book because it's all about just taking those tiny steps every day and not focusing so much on the end goal but just how you've made improvements on a day-by-day -day basis. It's really great. Um, I found it really helpful as I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel because it can be pretty disheartening to not just succeed overnight. You know, you'll hear about YouTubers who have like one video go viral and then they are, you know, good to go. They're making all their money and all this stuff. So um, it's really been great for me to just be like, no, it's okay to do it step by step, one video at a time, um, you know, one subscriber at a time. And, and those little changes every day, those little improvements, that's what's going to make the biggest impact. It's not hoping that you're going to go viral like that's it's not realistic so highly recommend that and then this I have not started yet but this will be my next um, book that I'm reading there's no such thing as bad weather this is more like a homeschooling book about how to get kids outside and the importance of being outdoors on their attitudes um, and their confidence so that I'm really excited about but I I want to start it so badly but I need to finish and just get in the stay in a good habit with the Bible. Um, finish this book first of all and then I would like to move on to this one. And then my favorite fiction writer, um, Kristen Hanna, just released two or three days ago. I don't even, I have no idea what the date is today but on February 2nd she had a new book come out. Oh, uh, I don't remember what it's called at all but I'll link it below on my Amazon list because um, she's a really, really great writer. She wrote the book The Nightingale, which is my new favorite book. I think I read it like early last year, so that'll be next on my list too. Um, but I wanted to share those books with you because that's normally how I end my day. This shirt cracks me up because it's, I guess you can kind of tell from the front, but can you tell from the side? <laughs> I'm just about 30 weeks pregnant. I appreciate you watching today. Um, our days are definitely very different on a day-by-day -day basis. What you watched today was definitely like a, a typical at-home day, but that can really vary depending on uh, what we want to do for school or what projects I have going on for my antique booth. But in general, this was just like a normal day at home for us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today. I really appreciate you watching and I would encourage you to subscribe so that you can help me reach some YouTube goals. <laughs> I would love to get my channel a bit bigger before the baby comes because I just feel like I have no idea what it's going to look like for me to try to do my YouTube channel with a newborn. I just, I honestly have no idea. So that is something that I'm trying to work on really hard before the baby comes, try to get my subscribers up so that my YouTube channel can kind of start to grow more um, on its own authentically without me having to post, um, quite so constantly. I would love to put a video out every week though. That is my goal. Um, and you guys who are watching right now are helping that goal come to life. So I really appreciate you being here today. I will let you go now. I don't know how long this video is, um, but I hope you come back soon for the next video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye.